Hello, welcome to the fourth episode of Let's Hear How This Sounds. I'm Rich Burnett from The Sound of Machines, and this is the show where I share my process of writing and recording song demos. The catch is that I have to start with instruments and plugins that are randomly selected by a little program that I made. But beyond that, there's no other rules, so let's go. So like with each episode, we start with the randomizer here. One, two, and a three. So BPM 145, first instrument, it's gonna be a bass guitar using spectral time and auto pan. Second instrument's gonna be mini brute, that's a fun little synth, um, with a hybrid reverb and erosion. Field recording, not yet set up to, to use that. Wild card, frying pan. I actually have a frying pan in my big bucket of percussion stuff. Now let's move over to Ableton. All right, so we've got a fresh instance of Ableton here. I'm gonna hit Apple T to make myself a new track and call it bass. There's spectral time, put that on the bass, and an auto pan. Change my BPM from the standard 120 to 140, and that tempo sounds like this but I prefer to have a, a more fun sound than just a metronome when I start recording. So let's put something a bit more interesting here. I don't know what voice that is. I'm going to just drop a sample in. I'm not gonna use this as a final drum beat for the track, but it's a good way to kind of break into an idea and then replace further down the line. Holy moly, that is fast at 140. You know what I can do though? I'm gonna use my little zoom in window here. So what I'm gonna do is double click on this guy. It's gonna open up the window down here, the clip editor. I'm gonna hit this times two button. It's gonna slow it down. All right, that's fine, but here's some of those weird artifacts. Sounds like it's kind of going backwards here and there. So I'm gonna change its warp algorithm from beats down here to complex. Still hear some of that weird, kind of like MP3 compression sound. Let's see what Complex Pro sounds like. It's still not perfect, but I think it's good enough to play with. You wanna put a drum buzz on there and put some beefy low end back into it? Why not? I'm gonna name this Temp Drum Loop. Come with me while I grab my bass guitar. Yep, I'm wearing sweatpants. I do like the general feel of this this loop. But don't, but don't, don't, but don't, but don't, don't. Just record a bit here and see what happens. <laughs> I, I I don't know what it is about that 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 I'm just not digging. Easy, peasy. Give myself a bit more of a. Uh, Runway here. Let's find a new part we can we can add into the mix. I'm gonna fix one thing about this drum loop that is bothering me. That, that's the da don't pump. So I'm gonna cut that hit out. I'm gonna select this little section. Uh, I'm gonna hit Command E. So I'm gonna drag it over and replace this beat. I'm gonna hit Option and drag it um, there. Magic, I like that better. I'm gonna select all those little pieces, hit it Apple J. And that's the new loop. Apple D D D D D D D D D D D. Did I uh did I Oh, I deleted my recording. <laughs> In the process of um figuring out that little drum part, I accidentally uh undid my recording of that third section.
So now I'm going to come up with a really quick and dirty arrangement. What if as a beginning, um, it started on the high E. We've got a little intro, verse, verse, chorus, bridge. All right, I don't feel like I need the previous track anymore. I'm gonna delete that. Let's look at these effects that the randomizer is forcing us to use. For this, I will once again duplicate the bass track because I want to keep a clean bass track. A song can really benefit from a good low bass bed. I'm gonna duplicate the track. D. We good? I think we're good. This bass I'm gonna rename as Expera Bass because an ex it's an experimental bass track. So I'm gonna double click on this guy, open up its clip editor, crank it up an octave. Artifacty goodness. Let's turn it from beats to complex pro. If we try complex I like that a bit more I'm going to also put a an EQ 8 on there just to roll off low ends I don't want this track to compete with other low ends how does that sound with the actual bass I am going to mess around with settings on the Spectral Time plugin. I'm going to try pitching it up two octaves. Resolution Ultra. I'm gonna mute everything except for the Xperra bass. And if you need to freeze your butthole, uh, there's a freeze butthole option here. Oh, and it's just gonna keep adding to the frozen signal. Take it back off. I'm gonna freeze it and print it. I froze that and I'm going to print it. We're going to be this destructive. Here we go. By freezing it, we lost all the effects, including the uh, auto filter that we had not applied. So I'm going to put it back on there. I said auto filter and I meant auto pan. We all knew I meant auto pan. So the auto pan is back on there. I'm gonna turn it on notes and, and kind of lock it into a rhythm, a nice slow rhythm. There it goes, back and forth. So I'll need to figure out how to get the uh, expare base. It takes too long to resolve here. This is what I'm gonna do. Delete this. This whole section is an E. I'm gonna grab this section and this quiet bit before it, I'm gonna hit Apple J. Now this is its own clip. I am going to stretch it to fill this area. Let's hear how this sounds. Gonna need to find each note and kind of fit, fit it into where the the notes are in the arrangement. What's next? A mini brute. It's that guy right there. It's a solid synth. It's got some it's got some weight to it. The effects for the mini brute are going to be what? Hybrid reverb and an erosion. I'm gonna lock the tempo of the arpeggiator on this to the tempo of the song of this track by attaching my output device's MIDI port, my Scarlet device's MIDI port, directly into the synth. Here we 
we go. I'm just going to I'm just going to record some ideas and see what sticks. Let's do another track. I'm just gonna mess around with uh, another potential, with another potential part. just something simple like that like a kind of a satellite beeping up way off in the distance right on before I start processing these anymore I'm gonna grab a, the frying pan I've got this bucket of random noise makers and one of the random noise makers that's always in the way is is a frying pan i grabbed it from salvation army because i noticed it it had a good resonance to it let's see what happens a reverb is gonna put some immediate nice juice uh, some nice spice on it i'm gonna use the soft mallet Hmm. I'm at the point now where this hit sounds like it works really well. You get to the point sometimes where you can't objectively judge how something sounds until you give it a few days and come back and listen to it and you're like, that is so out of tune. I think maybe I will pitch it up just a little. Let's see. Let's try to get it. Almost there. Oh, almost there. That's, there it is. Awesome. Take this guy and duplicate it. What note should this one be? Boom. Okay, if I'm trying to hit an E, it's telling me I'm flat by about, uh, about 30 cents. It's already at 15, so 45. That's pretty cool. No low ends, kind of muddying up the mix there. There's still one plugin that we have not applied to the Mini Brute. One of these tracks has to have erosion. Don't get carried away, Burnett. Which one will it be? Maybe this solo? I think it's gonna be this arpeggiator. So this erosion plugin has three different settings. Either apply like a sign to your sound, a wide noise, that's a wide. And then there's noise, feels a lot more um, centered in the mix. Here's what I think I want to do is take an LFO and apply the LFO to the frequency of the sine wave and slow it way the heck down. Just gives it sort of an organic growth. It just keeps going on its own, whether you're playing or not. So it's always gonna be at a different setting depending on when you decide to play your track. So I'm gonna move some of these pieces around and um, make something that feels like a solid song structure. Gonna re-record a little uh, bass tail there. Let's do something about those drums. 
First thing I'm gonna do is kind of clean up my view here. I'm gonna put the mini brutes into their own group. You're such a brute group. Base is not red. I think I'm gonna re-record this. I don't have individual mics on my kit. I'm gonna record this one drum at a time. Kick, uh, hi-hat, and snare. So I've actually got, um, this is a, a just a little cardboard shape inside of it are either two or four piezo mics. I forget, they come out of uh, XLR here. Typically you just want piezo mics to pick up whatever they're touching, but this can also pick up vibrations through the air. I'm actually gonna experiment with this on each drum. So I'm gonna record a clean signal and uh, kind of a crunchy cardboard signal. All right, so if we take my cheesy webcam, Audix D6 pointed at the front of the kick. I sandwiched that little cardboard mic in between the tom and the kick. So it's really sandwiched in there. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens, I guess. I'm going to do the same now with the snare. I've got my vocal mic um, pointed at the snare, and then I've got the cardboard. I've got our cardboard friend up underneath the snare. Okay, so I've got the snare recorded with the vocal mic, and then the cardboard guy. Cardboardy. Hi, Hat. How are you? So I've done some monkeying around here with the drums. We had the temporary loop here. And then the, the new loop. One thing that the new loop is missing, that I do miss, is that noise. So I'm gonna add that back in, but I don't wanna fake it. I don't wanna put fake vinyl crackle in here. I'm gonna go to a website here. This is the Prelinger Archives. So this is a great collection of public domain films. Uh, you don't wanna just assume that the sound is public domain, so I'm not gonna be using any uh, music or anything from these films, but it's a great archive. I can I'll put the link in the description below. What's this one? Perfect So you can hear the beginning of this has the sound that I am looking for instead of downloading the full 35 minutes um, In an mp3 file. I'm just gonna record the sound. I'm using quick time here. Gonna make sure it's in my project folder. I'm gonna put it under samples. I'm just gonna drop it right in here. So now back in Ableton, I'm actually gonna drop it into the uh, drum group. Okay, I've dropped it in here. It's almost like rain on a tent. Let's take it up a little. To make it feel like it's sitting in the mix, let's duck it out whenever the kick drum hits. We're gonna use a compressor to side chain, listen to the clean kick. It's got a, its own personality, its own texture, so we are done with the drums here, all right? Let's move on. I think this is where I'm gonna put some vocals in and just see what happens. And I'm back. Took a shower, uh, wrote some some words down, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and, re and record some lyrics. You can see I have some scratch lyrics here. Um, I was using to find, uh, uh, I tend to hear like a cadence that I'm trying to hit with words, and um, a lot of times my lyrics don't make much sense. And I'm fine with that, and you should be fine with that. Just put something down on paper, record it, and you can always re-record it, right? Okay. Conversation too hot to stop 
Oh, okay. I just sang it the wrong way. Wait until morning. Turn this thing around. Reservations and wishes coming true. It's like you knew the temperature keeps rising. The moon's gone underground. I like uh, doubling and piling up vocal tracks. It's just fun. The temperature keeps rising. The moon's gone underground. It's nothing new. And then a third harmony. And if this thing goes sideways, the roads turn upside down. Okay. I'm feeling like this is a pretty solid demo, but when it comes to recording, there's no such thing as going overboard. Maybe there is. Let's take our time. Wait a day or two. Put a nice little reverb there on this tambo. Wait a about adding a little acoustic guitar into this. I'm gonna mirror the bass line with an acoustic. I'm gonna mirror the bass line with an acoustic. Confirmation the voice comes back around with half the words we were hoping Okay, as usual, I've gone way overboard from where I intended to go, which is always fun. Uh, I'm going to do some mixing. I'm going to do a bit of rearranging. And here's what the final demo sounds like. as well.
sticking around and um, do whatever you want to do that makes you happy in life. And hopefully recording music makes you happy. I'll see you on the next episode.